uh, Elder Francis Jadis. Um, I'm from Scotch Fork, Prince Edward Island. Back in the 60s, when I probably was only, or late, late 50s, I was only about six years old. My job was to uh, take all the shavings and pile them up and take them outside to the burn pile, as long as I kept the place clean. Uh, my parents never said, sit down, sit down and watch how we do this. They just, they just took me in and I just watched and learned. We didn't spend much time to uh, look around. We just had an affair up to New Brunswick or Plaster Rock and, or, or into Maine. Um, my hope is, I mean, I like to see the black ash come back. I got 12, 12 trees growing in a gully here and then I check on them all the time and they're doing good. Some, there's one tree there, probably planted about 12 years ago, maybe longer, and uh, it gave seeds in 2019. So it takes uh, seven to eight years for it to give seeds again. So in 2026, should he see some more seeds. And um, when I came across the border from Maine in 2019, I bought a bucket load of seeds with me and I gave them to the Upton Nursery. Yeah, and then they said it'll take two to three years, leave them before the seeds start popping through the ground. So this year to 19, be three years now they've been there. So maybe this year I'll call, up, call them up, see how they're making out. From scratch, straight from a log, wait to finish. Probably about three days, because I have to take the wood and uh, split it in half and quarters and eight, bring it down where I can work and shave it. I'll, I'll pound it and get strips out of it. Then I'll, I'll split them and shave them until they come out nice and thin like this or something where I can work with. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big process making a basket. So I'm the only one here in Scottsford now that can take a log and make a basket out of it. Well, this is the mold. I'm, this one that my brother Mike made. So what I do, I'll make the bottoms with these guys here. And I make a square bottom five inches by five and then I'll, I'll tack them on here. And I'll, this little hole here, I, I'll, I'll do the bottom and force it down. And then I'll start weaving it on all around. And I just go around and tell it almost to the top. Once the, once the basket is made, I make, I make uh, my uh, strips for the, to go on the outside of it. And I already made a handle here. The handle will go in on the sides right here. Like this. Well, I'll push it down some more. In the past, uh, we, we made baskets for a livelihood. We have to um, buy our groceries, our clothes. My father never worked anywhere else, and, and my, my mom didn't work. So um, all, all our income mostly came from baskets. We used to get potato baskets. We used to get only probably 25 cents, uh, maybe 50 cents at that time. It uh, wasn't very much. Right now, probably get a hundred dollars for the same basket. It's a, it's a, it's a culture thing. It's a, something we have to pass down um, this summer. Once it warms up, I'm going to take two youth. One, then one of them's going to be my granddaughter, Shiloh, uh, and teach her how to make a basket. So, I can, I can pass it on. 
back when the um, Indian agents from Amherst and used to come over, they uh, never wanted us to use our medicine. So they tried to take it away. So this is how we pass our medicine around. We'll sew them into baskets and pass them on. I incorporate the Ancestry Mugamug quill work design on this basket, these ones right here, and added sweetgrass, which made it unique. Sweetgrass is considered a medicine for our people, Mi'kmaq people. Uh, that's what I put on here.